Hi everyone, my name is Mark Kwok and we are talking about my favorite things. What we're talking about today is something that a lot of people are familiar with and it's a really, really popular computer and that is the 16 inch MacBook Pro by Apple. So everyone knows Apple. I mean, they are basically the man because they are probably the most valued company in the world. Clearly everyone has had an Apple device or seen one or used one. You can't go five feet in San Francisco without seeing some sort of iPhone or AirPod or something like that. So why am I even bringing up this MacBook Pro as, as one of my favorite things? Well, I'll be honest with you. There is a reason why Apple is so valued and so respected. And frankly, in, ter in terms of consumer electronics, I would imagine that every single company looks up to Apple. I am an Apple fanboy and that's, it hurts me a little bit to say that because I do want to support smaller businesses or innovative companies or, you know, not just the man, but man, every single time I get an Apple device, it just works so well, it's so beautiful. Everything is just thought out so much more significantly than pretty much any other device. And even though they may not be the most innovative in the world, they definitely set the standard for any device that they create. And today I wanna to focus specifically on the MacBook Pro. This is a 16 inch version. It's been out for maybe a little less than a year, but they refreshed this from a 15 inch to a 16 inch. So why do I love this laptop so much? Well. I am a tech nerd and I've owned so many laptops in my time. I, I've had gaming laptops. I have a, a Razer Blade currently as one of my gaming laptops. I've had uh, sort of just regular PCs that were laptops. I've had ultra thin and lights. If I'm just looking for kind of that all around laptop, the one I can use for most things and have a satisfying experience with all throughout, nothing really competes with the MacBook Pro. They've thought through everything. When you think about a laptop, yeah, it's, this is nothing revolutionary, but each little part of this is basically perfect. The thinness, how thin it is ultimately, I mean, they've come a long way. You, you, these MacBooks used to be really quite thick, not anymore. The USB-C ports, people hate this, but each one of these USB-C ports is Thunderbolt 3. That means that they have a ton of power coming in and out. So you can hook this up to a 4K or 5K display, no problem. You can data transfer super fast with SSDs. The Retina screen, which has been around for a bazillion years, but it clearly is a standard. I can't go back to a 1080p screen. Even 4K screens that are on laptops these days, they just don't look quite as good as this. They don't look quite as bright. Apple really makes sure that their displays are top of the line. The speakers, the speakers, I have not seen any speakers that have come even close to the MacBook Pros. They just have this base to them that you just don't get in other laptops. The trackpad, the trackpad is, I, people say that Microsoft Precision drivers for the, the Windows laptops is good. Once you're using day in and day out, the trackpad that's on these MacBook Pros, you can't go to a PC and say that that's a good experience. Like even if it's like nanoseconds or milliseconds of difference when you're, you know, in terms of your tactile feedback, Apple just does it best. With the 2020 version, they also have better keyboards too. It was really annoying for a lot of folks who had those butterfly keyboards, which were great keyboards if you you know get used to it, but they weren't as reliable, so people would run into problems. These are scissor switches. You're gonna get back to that kind of low profile that MacBooks have, but it is more reliable. The fact that you can charge these with USB-C. I mean, most laptops that have a lot of power that you have to do like video editing for and so on, you can't charge it with just USB-C. You have to use some giant brick, like 200 watt brick. It even comes down to something as simple as, can you open this with one hand? Can you close it down? No problem. Every part of the journey of using an Apple laptop has been thought out. And that's just good product design and I can't deny it. Now, why did I choose the 16 inch MacBook Pro over the smaller MacBook Pros or the 13 inch ones? or even a MacBook Air or something like that. I think they've come to a really good place around weight and size, and also getting a big screen and being able to be more productive. I, th I think they've wrapped that into like this perfect equilibrium here, where now you get a great screen, you get more speakers, you get kind of like 
the, the benefits of having a bigger chassis while still being small enough and light enough and sleek enough that it doesn't have any problems fitting into any backpack. I don't really feel the weight of it significantly more than a 13 inch. It is heavier, There there is no doubt about that, but you're getting the power that you don't get out of a 13 inch. So that trade-off, when I think about all the different trade-offs, this is kind of the perfect area for me. So what are the things I don't like about this laptop? I think there's a couple. One, I can't game on it, I already mentioned that. I also don't like that it is significantly more expensive than other laptops. I see why it's more expensive. And also with the Apple ecosystem, like I know I'm already expecting everything to be just more expensive than competitors out there. The one last thing I don't really like about it is, you know, once you're in the Mac ecosystem, you are in the Mac ecosystem. And so all your workflows, when you're editing videos or you're making, you know, you have to retrain to be a PC guy again. And that's why I like to have both, frankly, but not everyone can afford to have both, right? Like this is already a really expensive machine in and of itself. So now Mac OS is awesome. I do think it is clean, fast, easy. Each time they upgrade it, they, they do upgrade great things. Like you get some really good features out of it all, uh, but it's a Mac at the end of the day, it's still an Apple Mac. And so you have to get used to that. So do you need an Apple MacBook Pro? No, of course not. This is uh, cream of the crop in the MacBook family. You can, there are cheaper ones out there, the 13 inch, the MacBook Airs. And for a lot of people, that's more than enough. But if you are a heavy user, you do photo editing, video editing, various productivity stuff where you have giant Excel spreadsheets and blah, 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 blah. And you have, you need that computing power. This is truly an awesome computer. It does all those things really, really fast. I mean, I mean, I have a desktop computer that has a, you know, really nice graphics card and CPU, but I can do my video editing on here. You know, it just, it, and it works. It's a little slower, but the workflow is largely the same. Everything's been optimized in a great way. As long as you're not gaming, you can pretty much throw anything else at this thing. And I think they've perfected it. You know, the, the 2020 version, especially with the better keyboard, uh, the touch ID aspect, like all these things have made this computer my choice when it comes to having a laptop. Now, I totally understand if you don't wanna support Apple, there's a lot of reasons maybe you shouldn't, but if you want that clean experience, you want the best of kind of that laptop, everything being thought out perfectly, get the MacBook Pro. This is a 16 inch version. One of my favorite things. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mark Kwok. I will see you guys on the next one.